So one of the things that we talked about uh, helping our customers in their hybrid data or hybrid cloud journey. And what does that mean? Right. So customers obviously have been adopting cloud for years. That's that's kind of obvious. What we're seeing now, though, is that customers are taking kind of the emergency situation that they were thrust into in the pandemic, and they're using the mindshare internally to accelerate their cloud initiatives. Right. There used to be a reluctance for the rest of the business to push forward with these things. Now we're seeing schedules get accelerated because of the, the other businesses are like, hey, this is great. We can adopt change quickly uh, with great advantage in the business. So what does that mean, though? Right. It means that customers are adopting cloud and what used to be sort of a stable data center environment is not really anymore. Right. What we traditionally saw is you would see something like a virtualization uh, revolution. And then it would kind of stable, be stable for a while, right? There's a transformation. Here are the differences. Introduction of cloud into the data center means that the environment will never be stable again. It's never going to be static, right? Every workload all the time will always be reviewed. Is it running in the right place? Do I need to deploy it in the cloud or on-premises? Do I need to move it from on-prem to the cloud? Should it come back from the cloud back on-premises? And this is forcing an agility conversation with our customers, right? And part of where Metallica is really looking to address gaps uh, in terms of accelerating uh, that motion versus hindering it. Is that something that you're, you're seeing? Is that something that customers are really evaluating over time? Like it's not just, hey, should it be virtual or not? Of course, everything is virtual. Should it be on cloud or on-prem? Like decision-making process happening more often. Yeah, it's getting more and more complex. It's, should it be? On, it's, it should always start in the cloud, but mm -hmm. should we ever bring it on-prem, mm -hmm. period? Yeah. yeah, and that's a great example because it's traditionally been, hey, we have all these workloads, let's move to the cloud, right? That was kind of the first knee-jerk reaction with the cloud, but that's changing, right? I think it's the edge, it's really, in, from what I'm seeing, is, is pushing things out of the cloud into kind of this Netherlands, it's sometimes cloud, sometimes core, sometimes regional edge or far edge. It's you know, because of that, you can't just throw everything up and do cloud first and just have all your production and backups in the cloud. So we start to see people actually pull backup targets out of the cloud. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's the transformation of IT in general is causing this dynamic. Yeah, it's very interesting, actually. Yeah, the latencies involved with cloud are starting to become evident and customers are, are now taking that into account where, you know, even customers who are looking, hey, cloud first, I want to get rid of all my data centers are starting to temper that motion. Um, so we think that hybrid is here to stay forever for, you know, the majority of, of companies out there. So Metallic's aim and, and what you saw with Ranga's presentation earlier with the breadth of the platform, what we're looking to do is enable customer agility. We want to be able to let to support their journey at any point, whether they're just starting out or whether they're in the middle of it or whether they've matured even to a multi-cloud deployment. Right, which is kind of the ultimate maturity for customers. And we want to be able to support any workload that they want to uh, leverage in that environment. And that's the key. Data protection is one of the last things that customers think about when they're talking about their cloud journey. But what happens is they get to a certain point and they say, wait, I have to now, I can't move my workload because my current product doesn't work. Right, and so, oh, this project is delayed. And that's what we want to prevent. We want to accelerate our customers' cloud journey. We don't want to be the anchor that prevents them from making sound business decisions. And we want to do it while giving them the best level of recovery possible, right? And the ease of use, the ease of deployment, the scale, the speed that a SaaS data protection solution affords. And so really what we do is we allow them to have the same experience, whether something is on premises or in the cloud. And that's back to the question around recovery times, right? What does that mean? And the architecture of Metallic with the control plane and the data plane is tailored to deployments of production workloads on premises and cloud. And we make good choices there based on our best practices that we've learned over the past 25 years and applied that to help guide customers uh, to doing the right thing because flexibility often begets complexity, right? But that's where we've taken an active role in saying, no, this is the best practice. You can do what you want, but this is the best practice. This is how we're going to guide you in that journey. Uh, your databases listing there, does that uh -huh. include the managed variants for each cloud provider? Yes. Okay. Yep. And 
where might a customer see your roadmap for incorporation and protection of cloud native elements that you don't protect at present? That's a great question. So, uh, you know, being at, at Commvault for uh, 24 years, I would like to see my 25th year. So talking specifics on roadmap is, uh, it's not something I, <laughs> I, I, I like to do. Um, but no, we, we, we introduce um, new product at, at a very fast pace. Our innovation in metallic, you'll see that for those of us who uh, you know, joined us at Go in 2019, the evolution of the breadth of the platform from then till now has been pretty remarkable. And what I'll say is that we have a, a fantastic advantage in that we can leverage Commvault technology, right? So we don't have to write PaaS database support from scratch, we have it. It's a question of priority, customer demand, um, and, uh, and what, what the market is, is looking for from us and us applying the, the metallic experience and the guidance to adopt that to a SaaS first motion. So, so it, what is it's the philosophy there. on like what you attack first, what you see as a priority for incorporation? Is that something you could speak to? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, market demand. So it, it's what our customers are asking for. It's the most common workloads. One of the first hybrid cloud solutions we supported was VMware. Right, everyone's, you know, most people have VMware. Um, so you'll see us hitting off all of those, the, the top applications. We added Oracle, for instance, later. Uh, we added SAP HANA, right? That's a major workload moving to Azure, for example, right? So we added AWS uh, native support, right? For uh, VMs, databases, what have you. So you'll see us keep going down that list of, of, of top workloads um, at, that address the broadest spectrum of the market. Right. Um, definitely workloads is one key dimension for the roadmap. But another thing that you would see is going back to what I was explaining earlier around the intelligent data services, what you're increasingly going to see is there's going to be more features and capabilities that also come in as part of the roadmap. You know, more e-discovery compliance, some of the earlier topics that we were discussing would also keep getting added to the roadmap. Another one is, um, uh, you know, again, a call out to our community. Um, maybe it was a late start, but we do have a Commvault community which is extremely active right now where we are seeing our customers and partners providing a lot more inputs. That also becomes a key determination as we go forward in the roadmap. And going back to your very first question on, you know, where could we go and see the roadmap? We're not yet there, but communities are, um, you know, the next step is for us to get that roadmap guidance into the community. We are working on that. We'll, we'll get it there pretty soon. So I, I talked a little bit about the unique architecture of Metallic in terms of how we can support workloads in the cloud and on-premises. And I think the cloud workload support is fairly straightforward, right? That's something that SaaS data protection applications do. SaaS for SaaS is, is a pattern that's well accepted. But on-premises, how do we ensure the best recovery times possible for our customers, especially when they're working with large databases, large workloads that require you know, a lot of bandwidth, which is the most expensive and scarcest resource in cloud, right? It, it, you can't, it's very hard to scale up uh, network bandwidth in, in an economical way very quickly. And we do that because of our architecture that as Ranga mentioned earlier, seems to be uniquely suited for, uh, for this kind of architecture, right? And that is, we support kind of the, the four major patterns um, that we see a customer environments with Metallic, right? First one is back to the cloud. You can back up straight to cloud storage without touching any other storage, right? So if you have a cloud workload, back up straight to cloud, fine. You don't have to land it on uh, any kind of block disk equivalent or anything. It can go straight to blob storage. Right. We have native integration into uh, cloud storage APIs. So we talk natively right, to that storage. Um, you can use on-premises storage. This is where SaaS Plus comes in. We had to introduce this term called SaaS Plus because customers didn't understand how we could help them meet their RTOs on-prem with a SaaS-based data protection solution. What we do here is we allow customers to have a backup copy of their data close to their workloads. The workloads have gravity, data has gravity. We can't tell a customer, hey, you know what? Your RPO on premises for this database is poor. If you wanna use SaaS, send it to the cloud. That's not what we are here to do. So what we do is we allow them to have a backup copy on premises close to their production workloads. It's a backup copy, it's not a cache, right? 
It's not a cache. You have control over the retention of that data on premises. So you can say, hey, I've got two weeks of backup data on premises and I have a year of backup data in the cloud, right? And we will automatically restore from the closest copy when they go do a restore. So they enjoy the proximity of that backup copy to their production workloads. So when a customer comes to me and says, hey, I have a 10 terabyte Oracle database. I wanna use SAS, but you know, are, do I have to pull it down from the cloud? The answer is probably not, right? Because the most valuable data is within the past few days that will remain on premises, will restore from the on-prem copy. That on-prem copy can reside on their own hardware. You can bring your own storage, you can bring your own compute, what have you. It's perfectly fine if you have storage that you are not currently using or excess storage, use it. If you don't, we can help you with Hyperscale X. We can roll in an appliance, think of it as say uh, AWS Outpost, right? It's the physical footprint of Metallic on premises in an appliance format, highly scalable. You can scale out, it's uh, highly performant, it's cost-effective, it's very dense, right? And it can you're be- to, You're gonna have to, um, in either of those two scenarios, whether it's your yep. or all the customers, you're gonna to have to harden that environment. Yes. Secure it differently. Yes. Different different sets of you know access controls, yes. possibly not the same AD domain, all sorts of things, because otherwise it's just repeating the problem that your in cloud air gap was trying to solve. <clears throat> That's what the cloud copy is for. So absolutely you're absolutely right. So but, for sorry to interrupt. Yeah, but, no, no, but, go ahead. But if you're in a situation where you've had a ransomware attack mm -hmm. and the most logical thing then is you're going to want to use the what the copy that's closest and fastest yes surely you want to use the on-prem copy and not the cloud copy necessarily so true you'd want to harden those to make sure that those don't get attacked at the same time everyone else does that's right and we have features built into the software as well as the appliance that cover that things like access controls that only let metallic services talk to the block storage right so we have uh, filters that prevent any other process from accessing the file system uh, we have hardened controls, hyperscale access controls built into it, automatically deployed and applied for the operating system, for you know, uh, general access to the, to, the, to the appliance. We do that for uh, customer deployments as well on their own VMs, for instance, right? So there are strong guidelines as well as strong practices that we put into place to right. guard that, which our customers on premises enjoy today, right? With Commvault software and hyperscale X those controls come along with uh, a metallic deployment as well. Yeah, no, excellent point. And you're right, it has to be protected uh, from those things. Is there an on-premises variant of the isolated virtual air gap? So that's what Hyperscale X is. So if you look at uh, Hyperscale X, the, the appliance that we have that uh, customers can optionally deploy on-premises, that is a, a, an all-in-one appliance with compute and storage. Uh, that has all of these things built in with immutability controls and, and other controls to ensure uh, that that uh, data is protected. Yeah. Uh, you're warming this old curmudgeon DBA's heart here with, uh, <laughs> because we don't talk enough about database backups. Very different problem from going Very to the file back. Yes. So just curious for Oracle mm -hmm. databases, right? If they're on-prem especially, yep. uh, you support the Oracle encrypted backup strategy, or if somebody doesn't have that, hasn't licensed it, do you support your own as well? Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, our software in general, so whether it's self-deployed, uh, Hyperscale X or Metallic, supports uh, encryption from client all the way to storage. Gotcha. So we support compression to duplication encryption because we have control over the full stack. So you can actually dedupe encrypted data, right? Okay. Which is hard to do with an, with an external appliance. Right. Um, with things like Oracle and other uh, databases, we like to let DBAs do what they like to do. <laughs> that was my next question. So recovery manager, so, fully supported. Our man, fully right. supported. We exactly. generate scripts for you. Like we will, we, we support full uh, integration with, with uh, SAP's backup tools, with BR tools, right? Uh, right. All of those things are, exactly. are all supported because most of the time, uh, database administrators like to do things in kind of their own automated scheduled fashion with scripts and other kinds of uh, automation capabilities. Exactly, right. exactly. Yeah. You've met us, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I've been at Commvault for almost 24 years, so I'm an old tape guy, I understand, right? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm right there with you. So yeah, old tape guy who's in Metallic now, right? <laughs> it's a big jump. 
But yeah, so so the the final pattern, right, that we address that, that is really critical is kind of the magic combination of on-premises and cloud copy, right? And that's where we provide guidance to make it very easy. And if you're using metallic cloud storage, then it's even easier, right? So you can really have that full stack on-premises with Commvault and Metallic all the way through uh, to cloud. And we make it straightforward with uh, with guides and wizards that you'll actually see uh, Mike show. So, uh, you know, really the, the, the point here is that we're uniquely suited with the architecture to help our customers connect the data centers, which are the new edge, to the cloud, right? We now allow them to have that mobility and that agility to make decisions about where they want to run their workloads when it makes sense for them, not when their technology limits them. And I think that's all we can ask as a, as a partner to our customers is to enable them uh, to accelerate their business. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike so you can actually see some of this in action. Um, I'm going to go through the hybrid solution. Again, this is the fun stuff. We love PowerPoints, but we want to get into the, to the good stuff, the, the clicking stuff. Um, so with our hybrid solution, like David mentioned, we, we have a couple of different ways we can deploy. And you can see from these tabs, I, I like to show this because you can open up multiple things and look at multiple type of um, infrastructures, or I should say deployments. So from a VM side and database side, you can see different types of things that's going on. And we give you a nice day-to-day -day view on our, our uh, Metallic Hub, as far as weekly success rates, jobs that are failures, and you can see a lot of these tiles are interactive. So this failure would take you to the reports, which you can schedule out. Uh, if you click on a specific plan, that's gonna take you to the plan, show you exactly, uh, you know, how many servers you're backing up, how, what the frequency is, how many copies, how long you're keeping the data for. So it gives you that that day-to-day -day view as, as far as what's going on. Uh, protected data sources, so you can see from, from a, um, an actual VM side of things and also hypervisor, we cover a lot. Uh, we started with a few things, but we expanded and, and we, we got you covered from anywhere from on-prem to those cloud workloads. Down here, I, I would like to touch on, which I didn't with the security IQ, is more of a, um, I like to call the resource center. So at, as far as administrators, you can create users and groups from here. Now this is a great part because you can create specific roles for users for each group. So if you wanted to define a user for a server group that only has access to VMware, but doesn't have access to say Azure VMs, you can define those roles and make the software more secure. So they're only seeing their workloads, especially with DBAs. They don't care about VMs and other things. They just want to see their databases. So you can define a server group or a role that only has SQL server or has um, Oracle databases to really define it and make the software uh, much more manageable and easier to use. Everything's about simplicity today. We want it simple. We want it deployed fast. Not only that, we want to be able to recover from something. You can look at our documentation and our metallic community, uh, like we were just talking about, Ron was talking about, which is really cool. Everybody's interactive there, uh, ask questions and stuff. And then our support portal. This is big because built into the product, support is included. You guys don't have to worry about support and maintenance ever again. It's 24-7, 365, best in the business for 25 years. Not that I worked there for eight years, but, um, you know, they really know the product inside and out, and we follow the sun. So, as uh, you know, people transition, uh, we do have uh, data centers all over the world uh, to cover the support aspect, okay? Now, from a configuration standpoint, the SAS Plus model is really cool because we can give you a couple different ways to deploy this. So from a VMware side of things, we just need a communicator, which we call the backup gateway. And that backup gateway is just a Windows VM or it could be the Hyperscale X appliance, which tells us that could be now your, your storage location plus the cloud connector. But if a customer already has storage that they're using because it's we're software agnostic or hardware agnostic, we can really work with any other type of, of vendor as far as landing that data. So we would take that backup gateway, that's a Windows VM, deploy our backup software, on it, which has the virtual server agent, it has the storage accelerators, it has media agent, and then it's just gonna tell us where those copies are going. So if I wanna store that local copy for those faster restores and set the retention, I can, but then I can create that secondary copy to the cloud. Now, the great part about this is we allow customers to bring their own Azure AWS, or for the extra security, we do offer two tiers of storage, hot and cool, we call that MCSS. 
it's great to have because now that gives you that virtual air gap portion. If they don't have a subscription or even if they have their own subscription, they can bring that and send a secondary copy to our cool tier so that now it's isolated from uh, their actual storage tenant themselves. So if there was ever a compromise or whatnot. So really all it is, it's all wizard driven. There's six steps to follow this. I'm not going to go through everything because we want to see the, you know, how, how things work, but you know, you could deploy a new gateway, use a different one, and then it's really just connecting to the hypervisor. So it's a couple steps. We make that connection with an administrator account to the hypervisor, grab a list of VMs. We can go by tags. We can go by different things um, as well. So it's very easy to deploy, pick the VM content, local storage, cloud, and then we can select the plan. And then it's, it's done. It'll ask you to run a backup, and then you can start going through different types of configurations if you wanted to. Okay, so again, everything is all wizard driven, nice and easy, especially on the cloud side of things because we have that direct API with Metallic. Now you get a true cloud to cloud backup. You create an Azure app inside of Azure. We hit the subscription, the tenant ID, we're connected. We can back up those Azure VMs in a couple minutes. I've deployed customers that had a couple hundred VMs in 35 minutes, they're backing up their stuff. Office 365 is just as fast or even faster. So again, having that nice cloud to cloud backup, no virtual appliances anywhere really makes the software simple and, and very, very easy to use. The, the, the clouds list, you got EC2, you got Azure, right? Hyper-V is a you know, regular VM. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not prevented from say sticking an agent in an actual operating system and say, I'll say IBM cloud or Oracle cloud or Alibaba or some whatever the cloud service that might be running. You could just back it up like a regular server, can't you? Oh, for a file, so yeah, absolutely. A file system agent or something. Yeah. If it's a hypervisor, we don't support you install the file system agent on it. It'll still do the system state. It'll do the file level recovery, you know, of those files and things like that. Absolutely. Now, once we want to take a look at the actual information, once we get the VMs backed up, we can click into here and this will take us to the Commonwealth Command Center. And I just want to address, there's a, qu a question I, I think from Enrico on Twitter. He had some uh, questions about um, integration with Commvault and Metallic. So what this is, is because it is Command Center and our existing customers are using both side by side, we can actually attach the Commvault Command Center inside, or we can attach Metallic inside the Commvault Command Center. And it gives you a link that says Metallic and it just redirects you. So now for our hybrid customers, you can manage both solutions from a single pane of glass. And it's really cool. I don't have it in my lab. We have some uh, video and stuff we can, we can share out, but it's a nice feature that people are using or people are, are using if they're in that hybrid solution. You can go ahead and uh, you know, take a look at that. And so it's really cool. Okay, so as you can see from the virtual virtualization side of things, my hypervisors, I can click in here and then I can go ahead and take a look at my different uh, data centers. So I have my VMware, I can, this will give you a general overview. Cool part about this is every part of this product, we have a recovery point. Recovery point's key, God forbid there was ever a compromise, ransomware, anything like that, we can go to that point in time and recover that actual VM if we need to. Now, when you have a local, um, a local gateway or local storage, when we click the restore button, we, get, we have a couple different options that's not utilizing that. But we also have a live mount and a live mount feature in live recovery where it will actually take the VM and mount it to that local gateway as an NS, NFS wrapper. And then you can, you can actually RDP uh, into that VM make any changes to it if you had to, just maybe if you wanted to do a test to make sure that that VM is gonna come up before you do a restore, we have some really cool features. But from a restore perspective, you can see we do um, four things right from here. So we can crack in, do the guest files and folders. We can do the VMDK file. We can attach that VMDK to an actual disk or ESX host, but we can do the full restore. And the thing I like to point out on these full restores, because it's really cool, is not only can we restore that whole VM directly back in place if it was ever compromised, but we can also do those conversions and migrations for you. So that's key. We have a lot of customers that are starting to consolidate data centers. We want to maybe replace some things. We want to start going into the cloud or transitioning or whatnot. We can take that VM and now we can convert it for you to Amazon instance. We can go to Azure. Maybe if I have some free hypervisor laying around, you know, Hyper-V, I can go ahead and convert that to a Hyper-V as well. So we can now help customers 
migrate, close data centers down, save some money, but also do those restores, God forbid, on-prem production got compromised, we can get them up and running as fast as possible. And that's nice having that local resource, or if you're coming from the cloud, you can vice versa. You can go from uh, Azure back down to home on-prem if you needed to as well. So we give you a lot of, a lot of cool features. So you, you said before that you have a link to Metallic, but actually, so does it mean that I can't define global policies across the two environments? So there's still two separate environments. That's a great question. So unfortunately, it's two separate environments. So from a policy perspective, you would, you would set that up in Metallic. Are you talking about more of like a role-based access type of deal or, or server plans? No, in general, I mean, the server... So uh, if I have, for example, I want to define a, a policy for different VMware environments, some of them are under, you know, uh, Combo. recovery, yeah, and others are under metallic. I can't define a single policy that applies to globally to everything. What could so be? if I want to recover a file, but I don't know where this, this file was originally, can I do a global search of some sort to see? You know, the VM or the, or the file or whatever I want. Yeah, great question. So typically, typically what we see customers do is they don't mix the same workload or they don't split the same workload across their own self-managed environment and metallic, right? So if you have VMware, it's typically all protected with one and or all protected in the other. So for instance, you might have uh, a customer protecting their on-premises workloads with uh, Convol Complete or uh, Hyperscale X. And then maybe Azure VMs or Office 365 with Metallic. Yeah, but right? what happens if I have VMware on AWS, on VMware or any, on any other cloud? Mm -hmm. so do I use, you know, potentially, I don't want to back up everything that is in, uh, in the cloud mm -hmm. with an on-premise product. I... Yep, so even, even our, so our, our technology, because it's, it's, it's common, right? You can protect it using your own self-deployed elements in, in cloud as well, right? So you have that capability. Um, and, you know, cross search capabilities, things of that nature are certainly something we're contemplating for the roadmap and further unification of, of the platforms. Um, but, you know, it's, it very much comes down to kind of best practices in terms of, and customer preference and how they want to deploy. Uh, and that's the flexibility we provide in the power of and that Ranga mentioned before is that you know, it, it comes down to a customer by customer preference many times, right? And it depends on the, the group that's managing that infrastructure element, um, whether it's, you know, the business unit running Office 365, like the app owner, or if it's more IT centric, like uh, VMs might be. I have a quick question about the restore options there and the <laughs> conversion process. Do you have the ability to do that conversion at backup time? so that you can get like a, you know, if, if you want to restore into AWS or Azure, you can get a, a quicker restore time rather than having to do that during the restore itself where it might take extra time for that VM to come up in, in the public cloud. So from that type of capability, not yet. So it's almost like a live sync capability or something like that, um, you know, which we do to have in our, our Commonwealth product. Um, we are going to have, you know, we, we do have roadmap for, for things like that. But currently right now, if they want to do a migration, it's, it's a manual. So they would have to pick the machines, restore from a backup to, to uh, bring it up back in Azure or AWS or something. I want to touch on the databases. I uh, just want its time. From, from an EC2 instance standpoint, cool features as well is, you know, we do work with those EC2 instances. We deploy that backup gateway. But the thing that we took to the next level is we create those roles for you on the fly. So real cool with the software is you don't have to worry about putting those IAMM policies in place if you don't want to. We will do it by launching the actual cloud form stack, doing it automatically. You can even copy the link and send it to an administrator if you don't have access or, or deal with those permissions. But we will go ahead and deploy that. And then we can go ahead and uh, also deploy Gateway uh, automatically for you too. So we do the provisioning, we do the, the scripting, we get everything up and running for you. So there's no, nothing behind the scenes that you would have to do from a deployment standpoint to really get EC2 instances up and running or even databases as well. That brings me to the database portion of the product is 
we do cover those databases as a whole. You can do, you can see we do SQL, Oracle. We just launched not too long ago uh, RDS, Dynamo, Document DB, Redshift. But we do the deployment for you from a uh, IMA role, or even if you want to use multiple roles as well, uh, we will go ahead and deploy all that stuff for you. So you can see the policies. It does deploy all the policies, but let's just say you're, you're using RDS or whatnot. When it does deploy the policy, you can just actually go into the, uh, the, the stack and then remove the policies you don't want to, and then maybe add them at a later time you know, when you do the, uh, the actual configuration. But again, everything is wizard driven. We took that next step and really do, we do all the heavy lifting for you. So you don't have to really spend too much time uh, deploying the software. We get it up as, as fast as possible. And then we give you some killer point in time restore capabilities. I know the DBAs are gonna love this. We do a lot of the heavy work for you, especially if you're gonna restore a database or maybe you wanna clone a database or something like that. But recovery is big. And if we wanna go back to a specific point in time, now maybe coming off of uh, that local gateway or you know from the cloud or something like that, we give you the recovery points, but we also give you a cool little slider for transaction logs. So now I can pinpoint this transaction log backup from 1.35 in the morning because I know it was compromised around, you know, maybe two o'clock, click on my restore button. I'm gonna bring this whole database back in one shot, directly back in place. I can even go out of place, change database name and file location so I don't overwrite production, pick a different instance as well, and then go ahead and put it into different recovery models. So we have our you know, full recovery, no recovery, and then the standby to apply transaction logs. And then a third little option we added is uh, restore to disk. This is for our DBAs that still like to use SQL queries and, and mountain database manually inside of Management Studio. We will restore the uh, BAK file and then you can mount it inside SQL yourself if you wanted to. On the Oracle side, we do the archive logs, we do the R man, we, we do all the, all the heavy, heavy work that you guys are used to doing right inside the software. And again, it's, it's not a point solution. This technology has been in, out for over 25 years, uh, best in the business, tried, tested, and true. It really is, it's nothing new to us. It's just, we're making it easier and better for our customers to be able to go out there and protect the data, not on prep, but with this cloud digital transformation that's you know, taken over since, uh, since the pandemic hit. And, and one of the key things that Mike um, briefly showed there was the AWS workloads. Uh, the cool thing there is we support AWS storage as the backup target for that. So David was earlier talking about on-prem workloads, on-prem storage. That's not where it ends. If it's AWS, it's AWS storage. Of course, you can choose to use our own MCSs. That's fine. But then for fast recovery, you need to keep the backup copies close to the workloads, right? So that's that's the flexibility that we enable through Metallic. Can you use cloud adjacent storage outside of AWS if you wanted to? From an Azure perspective, if you wanted to take now, let's say a third copy, we'll go ahead and say EC2 instance, you can now take, you know, not only can we go to a hot tier in uh, AWS, cool tier, archive tier or whatnot, you can send a copy to our storage as well. Now you get another um, set of, of not only storage, but virtually air gaps so where nobody has access to this in case somebody got to your primary storage location. So you can go to our Azure if you wanted to. Yeah, if that, if that cloud adjacent storage is addressed with something like NFS or block, mm -hmm. yes, answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 